Hello and welcome to Yarn Tales by the Sea. I'm Kelly Ann and this podcast is coming to you from the south east coast of the United Kingdom. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, if you're a new subscriber, welcome. And my long term viewers, it's good to have you back again. Um, I think this is going to be quite a long podcast um, because we have had some difficulties and before I sort of get into everything else, um, this is my partner, Colin. Hello. And he does all the editing for my videos and he's going to explain what went wrong really, <laughs> why it's been so long since we podcasted. So I think it would be easy to say what didn't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, initially the everything has to go on BT. Um, we're living... Hang on. What? To um, the non-UK no, members, BT is British Telecom, which is one of the, it, basically they provide all the lines um, to whatever internet provider you are with. Yeah, and we've got, what we're supposed to have is fibre optic, which is one of the fastest ones in the UK. However, we live so far away from a telephone exchange that, um, we get broadband speeds. So the uploads and the downloads are just, well, they're ridiculous. We've um, been onto BT, they said, oh yes, we'll get it sorted out. We've been out onto an internet provider. They're waiting for BT to sort it out. Hopefully, this one will be uploaded quite quickly um, and we'll get it up as soon as possible. And that's about it. So I've done, her last, Video, I just didn't want to upload, didn't want to do nothing. So we've got to. This is a, a re last re two. Oh, last two. two we've it? tried yeah. to get up. So this is the third recording. This is the third recording. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, going from when I last put a podcast up, so yeah. because we had trouble getting them up, it wasn't worth um, putting old content up. Because uh, <laughs> so. So yeah, that was it basically. So yeah. I'm going to hand back over to Kelly. I'm I'm going to sit in on this one. It's going to be yeah. a bit different. So, over to you, Kels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so basically, it's um, they're going to put a booster thing. They they were, they were said they'd done it when they hadn't, so that's mm. why we had all the problems, but they've assured us um, it's going to be happening soon, and uh, our provider, which is Plusnet, has tweak, tweaked us up a bit, so, yeah, we're all good to go. Because it was just so annoying, because I was missing out on so many things, Zoom meetings, and... Oh. Mm. Anyway, it's good to be back. So I'll get the admin stuff out of the way first. Um, I'm involved in a make-along with the lovely, delectable Leslie from Not Quite Enough Yarn. Hi, Leslie. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we're doing the Ocean Mail 2020. So um, we both have Ravelry groups and all the information uh, will be put down in the show notes. So basically, you can either knit, crochet, uh, spin, weave, name of the yarn, anything to do with the ocean. So that can be like beach colours, sea colours, shell colours, coral colours, anything to do with the sea. That If you can convince us that it is um, sea related, you're in. So basically, um, we give away prizes quarterly. So both of us that is. So you can double dip into both of our uh, rubbery groups um, so basically we do a, a, a prize for the um, chatter thread and a prize for the actual uh, pictures of your work so I'm not explaining this very well am I but yeah um, you get the gist so uh, like I said we, we really really do encourage double dipping and if you're in um, other make-alongs and you think um that what you're making is appropriate for us please do double dip uh in as well so you know there's there's no hard and fast rules like i said even if you've got a, a color yarn that's that says coral for instance or whatever you know um that you're making your uh, item with that counts so yeah <laughs> Oh dear, so I've actually got quite a lot to show you today, um, obviously, because it's been such a while. Um, I will be giving the prizes away, because obviously I missed 
uh was it july yeah july because well we haven't been able to get on so i've got all that here sorted so i'm gonna uh, announce the winners a bit later on on that and yeah then it'd be uh time for the next quarter in september yeah <laughs> so yeah right so i'm going to start with um my finishes first i think yeah i'll do that right so i have finished my uh boxy jumper by uh, hokey loki telly um right i haven't blocked it <laughs> so that's it i do like the detail up on that you can see okay but like everybody else that's ever made a boxy all the um ribbon has curled but i've learnt to, uh, i think that somebody said to do it on a smaller needle and uh we'll put a bit more on but yeah right so the upside is i really enjoyed making it downside is it doesn't fit because <laughs> i put 20 pounds on since i started making it but i have started uh I'm doing Weight Watchers, I'm just by the app, I'm not going, so yeah, hopefully I'll get into it one day. So I knitted this with Drops Fable, um, which is a, a stock yarn, uh, it feels okay, no detrimental to the pattern, I, it doesn't drape that well, it, it does at the front not at the back so i don't know whether it's just because it's not blocked i mean it does fit but i just don't get i haven't got a lot of the positive ease that i should have because um yeah where i put so much weight on but uh yeah i do like it what do you think i think it's really nice i mean you don't i mean the amount of time it took to, to, to took on it well it's because yeah. i kept doing <laughs> other stuff <laughs> yeah i mean i think a bit of block out all right like in, normal stuff does it's really yeah. nice well i won't block it till it fits <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. right oh, i'm running out of room here um over there so next object like i say it's not a lot of finish but i've got a lot of stuff so i've made a pair of scrappy socks for myself um just just vanilla um slip stitch heel and uh oh god i can't think kitchen see look you know kitchen there so i i do tend to put a lot of length on my socks i um i do 16 rib and then 100 down so to the heel i just i just like a little bit of, you know i don't know why i just like an extra look and i i quite like them to slouch as well if i'm wearing um like ankle boots or something but uh, yeah these are all leftovers i'm i'm not going to do any more scrappy socks i reckon for probably a good year because i want my scraps to really build up so i've got more choice in what i put into them but uh yeah i'm really pleased they kind of match up but obviously with some of the colors um where they were um, multicolored yarn to begin with it you know color sort of changed a bit but quite like that so we're it's all right we're testing we're trying it colin's got a new phone so we're, we're recording on that rather than our big stuff so see how it goes and then yep another pair of socks <laughs> but the, i don't i think last time i podcasted i just done finished one sock so these are for his nibs so and I hate knitting socks for him because he's got such big feet. <laughs> they seem to go on and on and on and on. So I'm only UK eleven, they're not that big. Well, I'm only UK five. <laughs> <laughs> That's nearly double my size. So this I, I can't I think I might have chucked away the ball band, but um this was done in Antarctica yarn from mm. Hobie, Hobby or whatever it's called, the one in um Denmark um yeah quite nice the only thing I, I found with these is is they 
uh, I know there's up to the, the standard is up to four knots in a ball of, of yarn or four breaks but I found that when there was a break they did that the yarn wasn't um, continual with the colour that broke if you see what I mean but other than that yeah so I'm quite lucky with yarn I don't I've I've, I've had like the odd ball that's been absolutely terrible um, but usually I'm quite but again, yeah, it's the same as my socks, standard vanilla, but Colleen opted for a shorter cuff on these, so I'm not sure how many, I think I might have done about 12, so, yeah. So you're happy with those? I'm very happy with them. Do I get to wear them now? Yeah, but you're not getting any more varieties. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's that. Um, right, next one. Um, I made this don't think I'm leaving anything out I'm trying not to right I made a bag which is an attic 24 free pattern uh, just google attic 24 and it will take you straight there uh, excuse the jogs I've got a few jogs in now I've just got to fix uh, yeah it really really easy I wanted a bag that I could put my bigger makes in as in blankets and stuff uh, very easy to do, just some little flowers on there with um, just buttons in the middle. Circular bottom, it's very easy to do, you're just basically increasing all the way around to the size you want, want. and then um, yeah, you just carry on up the sides. Uh, this is done in Oh, Starcraft Chunky. Because um, Colin originally brought me the yarn to do a smaller, I think it's a weekend bag. It's got, I think it's a smaller one. It's more like a uh, like a little handbag you mm -hmm. take away if you go, you know, going away for the weekend. Um, so instead, I used the yarn on on this one, which is a bigger one. So that's what I wanted. So she does. I, don't, I think she does the yarn packs for the smaller bags, but not the bigger bag with the pattern. But like I said, that yarn was plenty to do this, and I had a lot left over. So I'm trying to get that. Yeah, it's fine. So like I said, it's got a few jogs I've just got to fix. So, yeah, that'll probably be never then. <laughs> right, stick that down. So I... I I will need that in a minute. I'll be able to reach it. Right. I think that's it with, um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, in case you wonder what I'm wearing, this is a uh, virus shawl done in uh, Lime Brand Mandala in the really, I forget what the colour is, but I really like it anyway, <laughs> that, this one. But yeah, it's getting quite chilly here in the UK now, chilly enough that, um, duvets needed over night time <laughs> God. well we had that heat wave i couldn't cope with it it was just horrendous i, I can't remember it's i mean what lot you know when we last had heat like that uh and i generally couldn't do any of my young crafting because i found on um, the wall when my hands were sweating so much it, I, it was just slipping and squeaking on the needle and i hate that <laughs> so yeah so that's that um I noticed overnight I seem to have acquired uh, eight or nine subscribers. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know where you've all come from, so somebody must have mentioned me. Possibly Leslie from um, Not Quite Enough Yarn, who is my real my friend in real life. So, um, yeah, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> right, so I will now get on to... Um, do you know, my brain's not working. You're, mind you, you're all used to me like this, <laughs> aren't you? Right, to my works in progress. <laughs> right, so I'll do this one first because I've got to be really careful with this. I don't know what that was. Right, if you hold that. Mm -hmm. So I had. Well, you can. Oh, this yarn. <laughs> there's a reason why I've got to do it like this. Which again came from Hobie and it's their twister, which is. Oh, trust it, one way around. 
it's 55 percent cotton 45 acrylic basically it's their version of uh i'm gonna murder this sheep jeez s-h-e-e-p-j-e-s <laughs> should have said it like that leslie <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I didn't know what to do with it, and I, I do like a virus shawl, so I thought I'd make a virus purely because I wanted one that um, was a bit more sort of lacy and showed the pattern off a bit more, because obviously when you, I think this uh, is an Aaron's uh, or possibly worsted weight yarn, can't, it's one of them anyway, and it doesn't show off the pattern quite as much, so... This is what it looks like so far. So I shall pan up from the camera. So, uh, so that's what we're looking at so far. So I'm really, really pleased with it. But what I'm not pleased with is the yarn. I'm, I like the yarn in itself, but it comes with two tabs so you can pull from the center or take from the end so i wanted to pull from the center because i wanted the the lighter color you know the, the purple pinky plummy color there going into the, the darks at the end and i was pulling really really gentle and then a huge clump come out and it was Ooh, a knot a huge knot and i couldn't un i just couldn't unravel it so i had to cut it out and then so I'm carrying on. This was into the mind you into the, the darker colours here. And then same thing happened again. And I've now got the same problem that it's a big bath. <laughs> a yarn bath. So I'm not sure because you know we we um the best way to finish a virus show is on the fourth round. So I've still got one and a half rounds to do. So I've got the dilemma of, do I try and carry on, uh, maybe cut the knot out again, or do I just strip back to the last fourth round? So, yeah. But other than that, I like it. So that's taught me no more pulling balls from the centre. <laughs> I've not really ever had a trouble before. So, yeah, so I uh, Bit and bit knocked about it. A bit knocked. <laughs> so yeah, I've still got quite a few bits to show. Oh, and some lovely yarn. Uh, right, what should I go on to next? So I get the big thing out of the way. I'll get the big one out of the way. Okay, hold on. I think I'm seeing right. No. Right. So this is my scrap blanket. I'm trying to find. Oh, it's, it's huge. It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> Like right, so <laughs> if I just go like that, so it's a lot bigger than this, but when I last podcasted, it was here, and right, it is huge, it's massive. <laughs> Look, I can keep going if you hold that end, yeah, put, just yeah. hold it, it. and pull that way gently, so you can see how wide it is and it that's the thing so yeah i think i've like i've started um brain's not working again <laughs> i don't know what you started so don't look at me decreasing that's it i started decreasing so yeah hopefully i like i said i haven't done too much on it um, because of the weather when it was really hot, but I have spats on it whilst I'll probably sit there for four or five hours on it And then I won't touch it for ages, but there's no rush on it is there. So yeah, that's just all acrylic um, All from leftover other blankets because uh, for my newer viewers I do like to make a blanket or two or several <laughs> uh, And I I really do like attic 24 blankets. So uh, and again, there are anybody not heard of Lucy and Attic 24 all her patterns are free and you can actually buy the yarn packs at no extra cost um, from wallwarehouse.co.uk um, I'm no way affili affiliated with her I don't know but I just love love her pattern so much or you can just use your own or you can buy the balls individual but if you buy the balls individual they still work out exactly the same price as 
um, they do to get the yarn pack. Um, yeah, so I <laughs> don't know why I said all that, but I did, didn't I? <laughs> um, right, so uh, a little while back, it was my birthday in, yeah, well, this month, and Delectable Leslie from Not Enough Yarn uh, very kindly sent me a pattern on Ravelry. Oh dear, hang on, sorry. Come here then. Oh, oh I she wanted to get up. Uh, sent me a pattern on uh, from Ravelry for my birthday called the Viola Cardigan. So uh, Colin will insert pictures here. Um, I did print the pattern out, but it doesn't show a, uh, a really good picture on the front with the way I printed it out. Um, so I've never actually crocheted a jumper or a cardigan. Um, I don't know why, I, I just never have. Um, and I've started this one and I must say I am really enjoying the process. So I just, I only started it yesterday. So, but getting a bit of process progress there so it's actually knitted in one big piece so you knit the knit sorry crochet the front back yeah the two front panels and the back panels in one go so that is the front panel that's well I've only just started on the back panel but there and all you, all you do is you just chain chain to make an armhole then you know um yeah I'm really, really enjoying the process. I don't know if at the back or the front. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I think I might have had it right the first one. Yeah, so I'm really, really enjoying the process. So thank you, Leslie. I am enjoying that. Because I, I, first of all, I thought I'll use, because uh, it's done in Aran, and I thought I'll use some um, stash yarn. But then, I'll get to that in a sec. I ended up buying this one. Oops, I've got ball band somewhere. Uh, good old King Cole, uh, big value Aaron. Uh, this is called uh, marble. So basically, I don't know if you can see it in there. It might, or oh, you might be able to see it better on there. It's um, it's grey. Main colour is grey. You've got black flecks, the odd black fleck, and the odd like creamy coloured fleck. Um, yeah, I say 100% acrylic. Um, so I was going to use some stash yarn. Now you can hand them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I had this. Oh. Oh. This. Oh, me, there we go. And the purple one. So these are the 400 gram Aran uh, yarn from Aldi's. But there wasn't enough of a colour to make um, the garment. So I was going to take a leaf out of uh, Leslie's book and nick a, nick a brand for a little while. Not quite enough yarn. <laughs> and do it out of these. But then I was wondering, do the colours really go together? How would I put the colours together? Because I'm not as clever as Leslie like that. Or maybe I am and just want her to look clever. <laughs> no. um, I didn't. So I thought, well, I'll make all of that yarn. I'm doing it in that one. And then in the future, I'll um, cobble something together with, with these. And but I'll just wear it indoors if it looks a bit naff. So I'm desperate to, to get rid of all, all this Aldi yarn. I really am. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Aaron's really, really nice. It's really, really soft. But some of the other yarn is, to me, is a bit to be desired for, especially the, the cakes. Um, mm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that. So thank you, Leslie. Thank you very, very, very much. And what I will say about the pattern is it is so easy to follow. And the designer... Uh, I've oh, left the pattern over there, I should have brought it over. Uh, the details will go on the screen. Has put a lot of thought and effort into uh, how she has written the pattern. Uh, it, it actually prints in pamphlet form, which means it automatically prints double-sided, uh, sort of so A5 on, 
onto an A4, if you see my so got double and um, back and front. And each size is done individually. Um, so you don't have to worry about counting over. Oh, well, that's my size, yeah. So you can just print out the bits you need. So, yeah, it, it's a really, really thought out pattern process because, you know, we, let's be honest, we've all been there. We've all brought a pattern we really, really want to do. We've, you know, printed it out and it's terrible. <laughs> we've, all, we've all done it. We've all done it, haven't we? And it's hard to follow and... You try to contact the designer and they either give a sort of nondescript reply <laughs> or ignore it. So, yeah. But this, it, like I said, really, really good pattern. So, yeah. Right. That's that. That's that. Uh, yeah. I'll, so, I had a bit of yarn left over from the boxy. So, I thought I'd um, make some... I haven't fin I'll finish this one. Um, so, what's here? Rose City Rollers, little shorty socks. Don't look very good like that, do they? But they look nice on. <laughs> I suppose I could. Actually, I could take. If I take one off of these. Right. Bear with me. That's that way. Right, so, yeah. Oh, might help if I get the heel on, right? So, yeah, Rose City Rollers by Mara Catherine Briner. This is just easy roll socks. Basically, it's no different than making a um, uh, normal sock. You don't need, the pattern's free on rubbery but basically all you're doing is you're not putting um, a cuff on you're going straight in um, on your stocking stitch and then I think I did about eight I think it's about 18 rows and then straight onto the heel flap I mean I, I knit mine on little tiny circulars and then I, I switch, obviously switched to DPNs for the heel flap and for the turning of the heel well it's half half dpn and half using my little circular so yeah to carry on with the circular with the yeah <laughs> so yeah that was left over from the jumper i've nearly finished the second one well i'm about halfway down the foot so yeah so that's that Okay, so it's, like I said, they're basically vanilla socks, so it's really, really easy to do. I um, started calling the hat, and I haven't finished it because I've been starting other stuff. Uh, so I'm doing that one. Yeah, this is that one. So it's just a um, King Carl pattern using the Drifter Chunky, which... I am using and it's a combination combination and I haven't got a ball band near it is got cotton in it it's and it's really really soft I think it's cotton and acrylic maybe I think anyway I'll put the details on so that's where I am so far so it has a very very large brim the brim is finishes here so I've just started in uh, should I turn it that way that's the right way so just started in that so I really really like it but I'm going to finish it before I start my new project so yeah project 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 what project am I oh yeah I know <laughs> yeah, um, do you know I don't think it's probably it's probably not worth me showing you Collins blanket because I don't I think I only put about four rows in Saying, oh, if I have to, <laughs> grab it then. <laughs> well, I didn't think it was worth showing because I didn't think there was enough on it to... It's mine. It's my blanket. Right. He wanted a blanket of his <laughs> own instead of keep nicking all mine. So, okay. it's just the... Is that upside down? That's upside down. 
Right. <laughs> right, so it's just a granny stripe blanket from Attic 24. Um, like I said, not a lot, I think. What did I do? Yeah, from there. So I've done, well, I've done a little bit from there. So that's when I last. So it's a Colin pick the colours. This is done in Starcraft um, Special DK. I did have the colours. So I'm, oh, I can always put it on screen. So yeah, he yeah, picked he picked them himself, <laughs> didn't you? Yes. So and ordered them. Put them in the right in the order. So if it looks naff, it's his fault. It doesn't look naff. But if it nice. looks really really good, I encouraged him to pick the colours. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> but like I said, he, Colin's not usually on um, on the podcast, but uh, well, you know, yeah, it's nice to put a fake face to the editor, I suppose, at some point. I won't come on again. I mean, yeah, <laughs> just, just hope your face don't put too many people off. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right, well, I think you I think that is all the yeah, that is all that. So I'm going go on to. Um, stash. I've uh, got to shut my eyes on this. No, no, you know all about this lot. Oh, I just wonder this. Oh, right. this lot. <laughs> <laughs> so my first one, I don't think I showed you, I don't think I showed this one. No, because I must have had it. No, I sh it was a one similar I showed before. So this one is um, by Woolly Mama Yarns and it, the colourway is Popping Candy. It is four ply fingering. Uh, super far, super blah, 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 75 super wash merino 25% nylon so oh look at the colours in that some beautiful colours don't know what I'm going to do with it well actually I do kind of I think <laughs> so that's that and then I have I have um, treated myself to a jumper quantity of merino uh it's the first time i've done this because you know it's obviously it's quite expensive to do a jumper's quantity so i had this um dyed to order for me so that i've got the four so it is um dyed by viking it's called ment as M M E N T H E, and this one is 100% superwash merino. So there you go. I really, really like this. Camera is actually picking up how nice that colour is. No, but it is, it is a beautiful mm. minty green with speckles. So. Uh, yeah, this yeah ha Viking yarns for, uh, on Etsy. You know, she does some beautiful yarns, and she quite often has uh, offers on. So this was twelve pounds a skein, so it made buying it a lot more you know a jumper's quantity a lot more viable for me. But it won't be happening very often. <laughs> so yeah, so what I think I'm going to do it. I want to make. Uh, a boxy but I want to do the v-neck boxy uh, but I I did actually purchase this before um, I had put a few few pounds on but I you know obviously didn't realize I was going to put oh all I can see is a rearing <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't realize I was going to put quite so much weight on because of lockdown and all that so I think this one would probably go quite nicely with it to do uh, some contrasting because the the v-neck is actually done top down so i thought maybe contrast it on the um ribbon here on the sleeves and then uh, i should do the sleeves before i finish the the body of the um jumper and then i've always got that to add some length on so yes really really pleased with that so yeah i think that's that's all the makes so I've, I've got an um, announcement to make I'm going to do something a little bit different but first of all I will get on to the, the winners um, yeah so I have 
four. Right, the winner of the prize is uh, Rick Rack, who made a pair of socks. So that's R I C R A K. Colin will put the details on the screen and a picture of the socks. So you're, I'm going to, this bag was lovely. Was it Su Susie Q, I think? Uh, kindly made and sent this as a, a prize donation so you will be winning that and a couple of really nice merino mini skeins which was made by Willy Mama Yarn no Hedge Hedgerow Yarns again off Etsy so, so if you can um contact me on Ravelry to claim your prize and the winner of a um, pattern from Ravelry up to the uh, pattern of your choice up to the uh, equivalent of 10 US dollars is Shirley Knits 123 and she made a wonderful blanket and again it will go on the screen so Shirley if you can uh, contact me uh, via Ravelry so I can send you um, a pattern and again with Rick Rack you can contact me and I'll, I'll uh, post the price straight out to you. Yeah, so I have to say there's been so many wonderful items gone up on the group. It's just absolutely uh, brilliant and uh, I've, I've looked at quite a few and thought, yeah, I want to make that, I want to make that. <laughs> So thank you. Right, um, because I've um, not podcasted for a little while, I thought I'd do another uh, prize giveaway rather than just a giveaway. So what I thought, and I'm going to run this one a little bit differently. I'm not going to run it through Ravelry. Um, is I'm going to run it over what we know. We're just coming to the end of August. So if I do, uh, from now to the end of November, I'm going to run, uh, yeah, I'm thinking it through, you see. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm going to do um, a hat prize. Not like that. <laughs> no, basically, I would like you to, well, if you don't have to do this, you know, but if, if you're in an, uh, a hat mood, is to knit a hat or crochet a hat um, but send me the picture via email and that will be going up on the screen uh, it's yarntails dot by the sea at gmail dot com and what I thought is uh, yeah if you do that and I will pick not one but two winners again one will be a Ravelry pro pattern prize and the other I will uh, find something lovely on Ravelry and send to you so that's all you have to do there's no rules no regulations only that you've got to start your hat from from when you've done this so no stuff you've already done because so, that would be a no no and that'd be naughty and it'd be cheating <laughs> so yeah if you do that so and the end of November um I will pick two prizes or Colin will, we'll use a random generator and if, if there's enough of you sending me photos and you know that and you've entered I'll, I'll, I'll put up a spec just an edition of uh, Yarn Tales by the Sea just to show off all the hats and um, yeah that would be really really great I mean you know I'm not asking you to send you send me the hats or anything you keep your hats you just send me uh, by email a picture of them so yeah it's coming up for the right weather to start making them isn't it <laughs> so I think that is about it and um, what I would like to say again is thank you so much to everybody that is a subscriber and for those who watch you know it's just yeah I'm overwhelmed uh, I never thought I'd get a hundred subscribers let alone um, over 400 so yeah it's really really good and the other thing I wanted to say I'm going to try and do uh, fortnightly podcasts so 
I think it would be a lot easier that way, especially if I do have any more trouble. But I don't think I will, will I? You should, as long as this works, you're fine, honestly. What do you mean this for? Uh, I'm only joking. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm going to make them fortnightly. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. It really does mean a lot to me. I do, I do not think of you as just as subscribers. I do think of you as people. And, you know, it just means an awful lot to me. So again, thank you so much for watching and uh, from our household to yours, stay safe, keep well and look after each other. Bye. Bye.